Hey everyone, today I'm going to go over how to set up your Node.js environment for debugging. Um, if you haven't seen my video, my previous video on uh, beginner JavaScript with Prettier, ESLint, and Husky, I'd recommend checking that out first. Um, if not, it's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to start with a pretty small project uh, and just set up the debugger. <clears throat> so here I have an index.js file. Um, I have a single function called main. I have a, a variable called message, and I'm calling that variable. I'm calling main and passing it the variable. <clears throat> if I start it, you can see it executes hello world. Um, so let's set up the debugging. What I want to do is I want to put a breakpoint in here and actually stop the code executing at this point so that I can um, I can check to see what the value is being output. So I'm going to click on this tab here. In your VS Code it may look a little bit different. Um, they keep changing this icon here uh, but look for uh, look for some sort of uh, debugging. Uh, you're going to see this up top, debugging with configurations. Uh, select the drop down and click on add configuration. For this we're going to select the node.js configuration and that's going to give us um, some default settings. The first thing we're going to check is make sure this line here program is pointing to your entry point. So the entry point for my application is in source index.js so you can see here, it's going to look in the workspace folder for source index.js. So, so far this is perfect. This is um, everything that I need to uh, set up for Node. To launch this, instead of clicking on the right side of the dropdown, I'm going to click on the start debugging. And you can see here this yellow line and this yellow arrow is showing that the, the program has started running, the debugger is running, um, and we've executed the code up to this point. So that's good. If you, um, if you aren't sure of how to set up breakpoints, um, it's to the left of your line numbers. Uh, you'll see a little red dot pop up. So just hit the breakpoint um, anywhere you want the code execution to stop. Uh, you can either click the start debugging, go up to the top of debug, start debugging, or you can just press F5. That's typically what I do. I, I'm constantly launching F5, and then to stop the debugging is shift F5. Those are, those are two hotkeys I use. So I'm going to press F5 right now. You can see it hits my first breakpoint on main. I can hover over message and you can see message is hello world. If I look on the, the left side, again you have to be in the debugging, um, the de debugging section, I'm going to see uh, variables. This is everything that's going to be uh, available to my application. So I can see here's main, this is, this is the variable main set to, set to my function. Um, I've got the message hello world. Uh, these are these are standard variables that are accessible uh, within Node.js, which is the module. Uh, there's also the require function. I can see a couple of other globals, which is the directory name that I'm in and the file name. There's a couple of other things that uh, are accessible within here that aren't showing up here. Um, I know one of them is the process. So if you if you select the debug console here, we can actually run code uh, within this context that we're running in. So while it's while it's paused, I'm going to enter in process because I know this is one that I use pretty frequently um, within Node applications. So this has all sorts of all sorts of useful information. The most, the one that I'm usually looking for is the ENV. 
So this will give me access to all of my environment variables. Um, you see here is my home. Uh, here's my path. Let's see if node env is set. Okay, it's not set. So node env is a is an environment variable that's set. Um, typically, it's either going to say development or production uh, based on the environment that you're running in. That's so that your code can uh, behave differently in different environments. Sometimes you want to have a production build that's a little bit more optimized, and maybe you have a couple of more debug lines uh, when you're debugging. So I actually like to set this um, this value. You can see when you go in, uh, one of the nice things about VS Code is it's going to give you a drop down of everything that's available. Um, and most of it should be pretty accurate. So to set the environment variable for this, uh, for this launch request, I'm going to go ahead and add an env section. I'm going to add the node env. And I'm going to set it to development. And you can set it to anything else here. Um, let's say like it could be debugging too. But I'm not doing anything special with the, uh, the development or with the node env, so it's not going to matter too much. But I can say So here I'm looking at, I'm setting is development to uh, process env, Oops. node env. And you can see it's undefined right now. Um, that's because I'm, I'm in a current uh, Node.js debug. And this, is, this environment is going to be set uh, when you launch. So after you make changes, after I add this line, uh, restart. So now that I've restarted, I can hover no over uh, node env and I can see that it is development. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want it passed in. Uh, but this is wrong. So <clears throat> we want to set this to a boolean value. And here we go. So now I can see that my I am in development um, because this is set to true. I'm going to go back here so I can see this. So here's my values again. You can see is development. You can see message. Um, you can see my main function. So I'm going to hit play again to see what this is going to look like when it hits this breakpoint inside the function. So I hit I hit play. You can also just press F5 again. <clears throat> That's going to bring me now inside of the main function. Um, one of the interesting things you should notice now is that in the local, all those other values went away. Um, I have access to this, which is undefined because I'm using an, an arrow. I have my value hello world. Um, but I don't have access to message. So if I go back to my debug console and I type in message here, I can actually see message isn't defined. And the reason for that is because the main function is defined above message. So if I were to actually change that, change the order of this, and put my variables above the function, we should see something different. Now that main is defined below message, main can access this value. So I'm going to debug there. I'm going to press F5. Here we are. Now I'm not seeing, I'm still not seeing message, which can look a little bit weird at first. 
um, until you understand a little bit more about what's going on. So I'm gonna, just going to check in the debug console. Um, just like the process that wasn't showing up, maybe this isn't showing up. And it's actually showing me a reference error saying uh, message is not defined. That is actually pretty weird to see because if I type it in here and press restart, let's take that off. I'm going to click again and then when I press step over, which step over is just going to pass a single line, I'm now seeing hello world written out instead of the reference error. So if I put this in here, I'm, I'm not getting any reference error. So let's, un let's undo that and, and have a look at what's going on here. So again, message isn't defined here. Um, if I go back to the way it was with message and I restart, I can see message is defined. And the only difference is whether message is in here or value is in here. Now this shouldn't have any effect because all we're doing is reading a value. We're not, we're not setting it, um, so I should be able to read it either way. The reason why this happens is um, the way node work is it optimizes the the environments that you're running in. So when I'm inside of main, it prepares the it prepares the memory or the the closure in an optimized way so that the the values that main has access to are limited to what the code can see. So because I'm not using message the, the closure that's created, or in this case, the, the execution context of main actually has no closure. The reason it has no closure is because the only access it has to the outside world is value. And of course it's running console, but that's, that's something that's, that's uh, globally available. So it actually doesn't even create a, a closure in this instance. So let's look and see what it does uh, once I put in message. I'm going to hit, I'm going to reload this with message in. Um, so now the execution context of main, because I put in message, has to create a closure. And we can actually see this over here in the debug. I can see my value is still hello world, this hasn't changed, but I have this new entry here disclosure. So this is one cool thing about the debugger is it lets you actually visualize what what uh, what node or what JavaScript um, is creating inside of the closure for this execution context. And you can see in the closure it's it's creating the message hello world and again because that's that's because um, we're asking for it in here is development is available here too um, but only if I were to access it in some way so because I'm putting this here if I were to reload the context again you can see is development is available and message is available Another nice thing about the debugger is these messages, um, they're all set to const, and those rules have to be obeyed uh, when you're writing the code, but we're not limited to the const rules when debugging. So if I wanted to change the value of something just to see how it would work, I can change my message even though it's set to const hover over it, I can see goodbye world instead of hello world, and then if I were to um, step over that line, I can see it actually outputs uh, goodbye world. Another great feature is conditional breakpoints. That'll let you pause the code um, when certain conditions are true. So an example of that
let me just create a quick loop where we're going to go through each of these messages and I'm going to output I'm going to output the main uh, with this new message 10 times. So just to see what that's going to look like, I'm going to hit F5 to run it. Um, it's going to say, hello world. Actually, let's just put a space in there. It's going to say, hello world, 0 through 9. So there's a lot of times in your code when um, you're going to have a lot of a lot of calls to an individual function, possibly thousands, um, and you don't want to you don't want to catch all of them. You just you want to limit it to a very specific one that you're debugging. So here, um, let's say there was a problem uh, with the the fifth uh, the fifth hello world. I wanted to pause this uh, on that entry. What I could do is I could say. So I can click a breakpoint here, and as soon as I enter in my breakpoint, you can see it's pausing on the 0, 1, 2, 3. I'd have to loop through each one of these to hit the fifth one. So instead of left clicking to create a breakpoint, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click on the same breakpoint location and say add conditional breakpoint. There's a couple of different um, options here uh, to select from. The one I use most common is expression. And that'll let me uh, actually test uh, different values. And the expression should uh, return a true or false. So I'm going to say value ends with 5. So what this is going to do is if my value uh, which is a string, ends with the, the number 5, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it'll just be false. So you can see here that the, the breakpoint looks a little bit different. The regular breakpoint is solid, while the conditional breakpoint has a couple of lines in it. And if you hover over them, you can see uh, this one just says breakpoint, and this is an expression. So I'm going to press F5 and see how this runs. Yeah, perfect. So we hit our breakpoint. We can see we're on our Hello World 5. Um, this, is, this is great. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that breakpoint, um, hit play. And everything ran like normal. OK, we just covered about a good 95% of what you would actually use to debug real world applications. Uh, if you find yourself reaching for console log, uh, take a couple of minutes and just set up your debugger. Uh, you're going to find debugging applications uh, using the debugger to go a lot faster than um, using console logs and restarting your application each time. I have more videos coming out on debugging other types of JavaScript applications, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those. And of course, if you have questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Joelnet, and I love answering questions. Um, if you have feedback on the course, I'm always open to feedback as well. Um, either way, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.